Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. So, I have often gotten questions from readers as to whether there is any way to use Capture One Express in a similar way to the Radiant X Transformer, particularly for Fuji shooters, in order to produce a file that you can then import into Lightroom for further editing. So, there's no direct way to do this um, in the same way that you do with X Transformer. In other words, you can't create a DNG. Having got these questions loads of times, uh, it did get the cogs in my brain going, so I wondered, was there some way that we could use Capture One's flat profile to achieve something similar? So, after spending some time doing some experiments, I actually came up with a solution that, that pretty much works. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. But before I get to it, there's a there's a kind of an important disclaimer I want to make here, and that is, I do not recommend you do this as a proper as a full workflow. Um, there's a whole range of reasons as to why this is a bad idea. Um, I'm only showing this as an experiment. If you want to try it, go ahead. There's a, the problems with this method are, for start, you won't be able to use the film simulation modes, so you won't be able to use Provia, Velvia, etc. And secondly, the file sizes are going to be fairly large. So I, before I start, I just want to say, because I know there's going to be people angrily typing on their keyboards, well, there's going to be doing that anyway, um, that this is a terrible idea. Yes, it, absolutely, it's not the best workflow. But if you want to try it, by all means, give it a go. Okay, so how does this work? So basically what we want to do is kind of create as close as possible um, to having a raw file, uh, but still using the demosaicing in Capture One and then exporting that over to Lightroom. So basically similar to the way X Transformer works. So I have a couple of raw files, Fuji raw files here in Capture One. Now, just to let you know, I am using the Pro version of Capture One, but this is designed to work with the Express version. Uh, the only reason I'm using the Pro version is because I have it on this machine and I don't want to uninstall it and just install the Express version just for the purposes of this demo. So um, it's exactly the same, don't worry about it. Okay, so what we want to do is make use of Capture One's linear profile. It's not exactly a raw file, but it's similar enough that it will work for the purposes that we're going to use it for. Okay, so how do we do that in Capture One? So what we want to do is if we go to the color tab and go down to the base characteristics tool and you will see we have ICC profile and curve and what we want to do is set the curve to linear. So what this does is remove the tone curve basically. It makes the image retain as much editability as possible because you're doing the least amount to it from the raw data. Now, obviously as it is, this isn't very much use, but what we're going to do is put the tone curve back on in Lightroom. So while this captures most of the dynamic range, there can sometimes be some parts of it that are still ever so slightly clipped. So just to take it a little bit further, what we're going to do is also use the high dynamic range tool. So go to the exposure tab and go to high dynamic range and set this up full as well. So this is basically our template for Capture One. We want this to be as simple as possible, something that you can batch process. You could save this as a style and then apply it on import if you were going to use this as a, as a way to batch process your Fuji RAW files. Um, but for the moment, I'm just going to apply it to these four images. So to do this, uh, now that I've set it on one, I'm just going to select all, so go Command A, and then go to Adjustments, and then go Copy and Apply Adjustments. And this brings up my adjustments clipboard and I want to make sure I have the right thing selected. So we have film curve and highlight recovery and then just hit apply. So this will now put this flattened version onto everything. Okay, so once we do that, I'm going to export the images and bring them into Lightroom. So we go file, export images and then variants. So in this case, I'm using TIFF and 16-bit. And you could use Photoshop if you're using the full version of Capture One, but with Express, you're limited to TIFF. Uh, you could use JPEG if you want to save a bit of space, but that will reduce the ability to edit the file in Lightroom. It will kind of break up much easy, much quicker. So uh, again, I'm just using TIFF, so I'm going to hit Export. OK, and I just let these files export. So the next thing I want to do is import these into Lightroom. So uh, to do this quickly, I'm just going to jump over to the Finder because I know where they are in the Finder, and I'm going to drop the folder onto Lightroom. Um, you can manually find them through Lightroom's import if you would prefer, and I'm just going to hit Import. Okay, so now that I have the image in Lightroom, what we need to do is basically apply our own tone curve to the image. So, in the spirit of all good cooking shows, here's one I made earlier. 
So as you can see, this now looks like a proper image again. Um, as I said at the start, it's not perfect, um, but it does work and it behaves somewhat similarly to a raw file. So we can adjust the exposure. Uh, all works fairly fine. Um, it still retains highlight recovery. So you can see we're able to recover, we're able to adjust the highlights pretty much the same way as you would with a raw file and shadows and so on. Uh, again, it's not 100% perfect, but it does pretty much work. The one downside to this is because it uses a tone curve, if you want to say use some of your Lightroom presets, most Lightroom presets will use a tone curve. So they will overwrite this and you'll end up back with your flat image again. So to get around this, I thought, why not use a profile? What I've done is I've converted this tone curve into a custom profile. So I'm just gonna reset this back. So here we are back with our flat image again. So this time I'm gonna go up to profiles and if we click on the profile browser and scroll down the bottom, you see I have C1 Linear Fuji. So this basically just does the same thing as the tone curve, but we can still use our tone curve. So now we have full editability and it's behaving almost as if it was a raw file. So, so I have a blog post on this as well on my blog and the link will be in the description below. And there you will find downloads for both the curve and the profile as Lightroom presets. And uh, you can use them yourself without having to try and recreate them. And um, the only thing is they are for the current versions of Lightroom. So if you're using an older version, say Lightroom 6, you will have to recreate the curve manually. And because it doesn't support profiles, this won't really work in that. Um, but anyway, uh, if you go to the link in the description below, you'll be able to download these. Okay, so the next thing we want to do now, just to finish up, is we're going to do apply this to the rest of our images and see how they look. So again, if I go previous, you can see normal file and we can, we have full control over it. We can adjust it. Again, same here. And same with this one. So that is pretty much it. So that is how you use Capture One Express like a sort of egg transformer. And as I said at the start, it's not an ideal workflow. It's not the best thing in the world to do because you will, there are some limitations to it. But the big advantage is Capture One Express is free. So if you want to try this, by all means, give it a try and see how you get on yourself. Um, I recommend that you also change the sharpening settings in Capture One. And if you have my Capture One Fuji guide, um, I have recommendations for the sharpening settings in that because that part of the image, it will be baked in when you send it over to Lightroom. And you don't need to apply sharpening in Lightroom because that will have already been done in Capture One. Um, alternatively, you could turn the sharpening off in Capture One and you then use the sharpening in Lightroom. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. If you have, please like, share and subscribe and check out my Patreon page if you want to help support this channel. And thanks for watching. See you next time.